Hey Joyce. Hey, hi. 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 How are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. And over here we will have a handphone for the setup, and then we put a lot of ice over here. Example, we have this uh, chalk feeling, and we will just bring over here. We will tell the customer this is the weight. If they want, they will just comment. Joyce Leong has been selling fish here in Ang Mo Kio for the past year. But this is no ordinary wet market store. This is where every day, a thousand viewers will watch an auction virtually. I can't wait to see you do the live auction. How many minutes are we, uh, are we from this? Uh, maybe another one to two minutes. Time? Ooh, showtime. Okay, stop it! Right now, let's go! Two, two, nine, okay? Full blanket, okay? Facebook Live shops have been popping up for the past two years, making them the latest battleground for bargains. So, Laurel is the winner for today. Today, there are more than 50 outlets on Facebook Live, offering products you'd never think would be possible to sell online. From fresh fruits to sports cars. Like most Singaporeans, I relish a good bargain. So I want to find out what these live auctions are about and if I can really bag a good deal on them. It's 10 a.m. at the Ang Mo Kyo Wet Market and Joyce is going live. We are getting ready for the live bidding which starts at zero dollar, starting with these jumbo prawns. Okay. Okay, zero price. Anybody want to bid for this five-piece jumbo prawns, right? Five-piece, ah, five-piece, ah. Anyone? Oh, okay, very okay. big, ah. You look at the pen size, ah. So that's anyone. Yeah, anyone higher than she, ah, twenty-eight. Very good buy, ah. Esther, Esther thirty-five. Anyone higher than Esther thirty-five. Okay, I have a ten-second countdown. Okay, before we close. Okay, anyone higher than Esther thirty-five. Okay, ten. Okay, you can see that the last one is Nicole, thirty-six dollars. Bit close. Okay, congrats to Nicole. Ah, okay, congrats. Wow, this bidder just snatched a deal on jumbo prawns at thirty-six dollars, when the retail price is almost twice the amount at sixty over dollars. She waited until the last second and outbid the other bidder by just a dollar. Okay, any bidders? No bidders are so Okay, you let us know what you want. Four piece chicken thighs, so much. Joanna at 22. Anyone higher than Joanna at 22? $9. Another 19 for countdown. Okay, thanks everyone and have a nice day ahead, okay? Bye bye. And yeah. Ah, how late. When you put the items up for bidding, do you make or do you lose? Uh, actually, some of the items is actually lose. Why not? go back to selling fish normally, entertain customers, see them face to face. So we are actually targeting on working parents over here and also due to some elderly. Okay, we have elderly customers, sometimes they are actually uh, sick and also not very good in walking and also they won't have time to go to market. So this is also one thing that we can send it to them. So while the sellers may lose money off certain items, they make up for it from increased sales to people who may not physically visit the wet market. I too want to try saving some money by joining these auctions. Okay, all set. I'm really surprised that at about 11 a.m. in the morning, there are so many live stream sales going on. Um, on my right over here, I have got two pages on Facebook that are selling seafood and chicken even. And these two screens in front of me, there are different pages selling lifestyle items like bags as well as clothes. I'm looking at average about 30 people online now uh, buying the clothes. But the seafood, aha, uh -huh, I'm seeing more than 100 pairs of eyes. That's quite impressive. Okay, this is sounding like a real market, but my main aim today is to buy some fish. Oh, 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 they're selling a tokidoki thing. Wait, 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 wait. Where's the tokidoki thing? What is that tokidoki thing? Wait, my daughter likes tokidoki. I gotta do this first, huh? 
Can you show it to me? She said yes, seven dollars. Shall we buy it? Oh my gosh, I think my daughter is going to love this. I managed to get a bag at just seven dollars, when previously a pencil case with a similar design cost me forty-five dollars. But then again, I have no idea whether the product is legit or not. So my main agenda today was actually to buy fish, but clearly I got distracted. Now let's move on to buying fish online. Oh, cod, cod. Let's buy some cod. Wow, they have so many buyers. Ah. Oh, my cod. I lost my cod. Never mind, tomatoes can. Is this enough for three kids? Oh, this is, this is, this is happening too fast for me. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh, I'm in an air conditioned room, but I'm sweating, I tell you. This is very exciting. I must say, the satisfaction isn't just in getting a bargain, but it's in successfully winning it in front of dozens of spectators. But what if not everyone here is real? Live stream auctions are the latest trend in online shopping, and I've discovered that I can bag a good deal from them. So Lawrence is the winner for today's month. But I've also found out that I can lose my items to other bidders if I don't match their bids. But what if not everyone was bidding for real? You may have heard of shill bidding. This just refers to people who put up bids just to lure others to follow their lead or to raise the price. Now, they aren't really interested in the product. I wonder if this happens too on live auctions. To find out, I need someone who has access to inside information. Weeks into my investigation, it was hard finding someone to spill the beans on any shady business that might be happening in this industry. But I managed to convince someone to talk. His name is Lim Jia Feng, and he was hosting live web auctions even before it started trending. Sometimes when I see other bidders going online, are these bidders for real? No, some are actually called uh, ghost bidders. They have a sole purpose to drive out the price, to make sure that the auction is actually earning a lot more. How can I spot one? So let me show you an example. On this particular auction, you can see she actually got seven or eight products. So she will be waiting for her own person, which is uh, normally termed as ghost, to start the bid. Then they will wait for potential bidders to come in. The moment they see there is a potential bidder coming in, the ghost bidder will actually upbid them by a very, very huge margin. Ramsey, are you there? You, are you want to hire them? There is a person who catch the bait. He put $50, so the ghost immediately put $60, increment of $10. So the person actually increased to $65. Anybody higher than Ramsey? So this is a normal bidder. He increased by $5 which is normal. Nobody wants to pay a high price for anything. So, he increased it to $80. Which is an increment of $15. Are there ghost bidders who are harder to spot? Uh, so, they might have a team of ghost bidders. They might have uh, maybe four to six person. So, there's A, B, C, D, E, F. A will upbeat B, B will upbeat C, C will upbeat D. The smarter ghost bidders, they will be asking questions. Maybe uh, the specification, the features, they will mimic the real bidder. Imagine there is five or six person doing that. So it makes it very foolproof. One. Given that sometimes in the live streaming mm. auction, things are happening so quickly and mm. I'm not able to track all the comments, yeah. what can a real bidder do? Do some research before you actually start up meetings. I mean, if you see it, this auction, definitely there's some telltale sign. It's very sketchy for auction without any timer because a timer is to make everything fair. 
Okay. It's not the optional to decide whether who got the items. Another 12 seconds to count down. Anybody Legitimate call auctions call usually call set call a time call limit call for call buyers call to place their call bids. Call but when there is no timer, it means the auctioneer can delay closing the auction. And they usually do that after one of their ghosts raises the bid. Count down already, seven, ah. They will be waiting for that one bidder. Six, ah. Anybody higher, anybody higher. When the legit bidder bid the item, the counter suddenly will go very fast. <laughs> Immediately to the end. Last call, last call, last call. Last call, last call, last call. Despite ghost bidding being a common last tactic, call, yeah. some auctions are still yeah, letting go new. of certain items the at very low good. prices. Wireless mouse, one dollar only guys. One dollar, cheap, cheap. For example, a hair curler. Hair curling iron, five dollars. And a UV lamp at just five dollars. So this is the UV lamp, huh? Some of these products, especially the electronics, are really selling very cheaply. How is that possible? So some of this product actually is return product, <sighs> or maybe even defective product. So they are actually coming from a place called uh, Amazon, it's because they actually got a policy. You know, you can retain it uh, within the month. So Amazon will actually uh, pallet all these items up. Sellers will actually purchase all these pallets. Oh my gosh, mm. how can I spot if it's uh, from an Amazon pallet? They will have a return label. It's actually a string of barcode. Then uh, at the right bottom side, there's four digit number. Amazon pallets are huge bundles of random returned and unwanted items which are sold off by weight to liquidators when the online giant needs to clear their warehouse shelf space for new products. Amos Lee owns Leilong Factory, a web auction house that specialises in selling pallet items. A year ago, he decided to set up his own auction house after seeing the potential in this business. And he's asked to meet me here, at this warehouse in Woodlands. This is where most of an estimated 200 to 400 tonnes of Amazon return pallets are shipped to Singapore every year. Hey Amos! Hey, Hello, hi, hi. 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 Gosh. So, yeah, this is the Amazon pallet that just arrived. Okay. So we're basically unloading it. This whole pallet is about $2,000. Are the items from the pallets new or used? I'll say there's a good proportion of both. Oh. So about 30% is used, about another third is unused new products. Okay. And the last third is discontinued stock. So I want to find out what is in your palette. Can okay. I get up there, please? Yeah, sure, sure. So, <laughs> thank you. Whoa. Oh, oh, this is nasty. This is nasty. It's it's like a a vacuum cleaner that still has got dust inside it. <laughs> okay, I'll pass it. Do you want to see? Do you want to see what I'm seeing? Come on, pass, pass the camera to me. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here. Ooh. This is what I am seeing. Here you go. Ah. Oh, okay. It's a vacuum cleaner? Yes. So what do you do with something like this? Do you have to sort of like rebox it if it works? Yes, if it works, we probably would rebox it. Either that or we so we'll sell it as no box. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So the critical question for me is, the appearances aside, mm -hmm. how do I know that the product actually works? For us, we will do a quality control test mm -hmm. on the product to make sure that it is working before we hand it over to the customer. Uh, if you don't mind helping me with this box. Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. All right. Can you see? Come, you can leave it here. Okay. So we're going to check these two items to make sure they are working. Let's see what this is. Now I feel the unboxing joy! <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, it looks like a, a pressure cooker. Pressure cooker? Yes. Okay. Oh, it really oh. looks new there. Yeah, this is brand new. We're going to turn it on to see if it starts. Okay. Then we'll see if it starts. Oh, it starts. Looks like we managed to power this one up. How much yes. will it sell it for? I'll probably sell it for about $50. Okay. And do you know the original price? Original price is about $110 to $120. Okay. This likely new pressure cooker costs Amos less than $30.
and that's why he can sell it for less than half the retail price and still earn from the sale. Let me show you our re rejected goods room. Oh. Amos is honest when he suspects some of the goods are defective. So over here is where we store our rejected goods. And he will either sell them as such or simply discard them. But I wonder if all sellers test their products from the pallets. So, so what happens to this? We'll just throw it away. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm getting a sample of ultra-cheap items from online auctions and I'm about to get an unpleasant <gasps> surprise. I'm investigating the hype over live stream sales and I've discovered that many items come from Amazon return pallets that may contain defective items. While there are some sellers who are upfront about it, I wonder if there are others who aren't. So I'm getting a small sample of items from three different sellers. Okay, so I managed to successfully bid for 15 items from three different sellers. Um, I spent a total of $68 and I cannot wait to receive the goods. These items would have easily cost me more than $200 if I had bought them at their retail price. A few days later, the items are finally here. Okay, so I've bid it for a bunch of stuff. What is this? Look, the box looks a little bit um, spoiled. This says Amazon customer returns. Um, well, I guess that says a lot. And I'm just going to... And there's another barcode here. This is exactly the barcode that Jiafeng was telling me about. Wireless earphones. It looks fairly new. I paid $8 for this, which is a garment steamer. Uh, doesn't come in a box. That worked. Put it here. Okay, next one. Just in case I don't survive this. I love you guys. I'm talking to my kids. Okay. Okay, so, success. Even if it's a little bit scary, okay? Hey, hey this is not working. So, I've tested four items. Out of the four, one is not working. Okay, let me check out these earpieces. <gasps> It looks like it's been used before. Do you see the difference? The part that goes inside the ear is a bit shinier than the rest of the earpiece. I suspect that it has been used before. I don't want to think what, what that, is, that is. Okay, so I've spent the last two hours testing these products and of the 12 products that I tested, two of them actually didn't work. Uh, this wireless bounce, and I suspect it's because it's not the actual receiver. And the Bluetooth earphones, the greasy earphones, uh, one side just couldn't work at all. Some of the sellers do offer a window to exchange any defective products, but the disappointment is really when the seller passes off used items as brand new. But defective items aside, it's hard to argue the prizes were not a steal and snatching bargains does feel good. I wonder if these online auctions could be employing other tactics to lure us into spending money on items we don't really need. Here we are. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Please come in. 
Rion Garcia has been buying items from online auctions for more than 10 months. If there is one thing he will not skip, it's the bundle auctions. So this is one of the items that I got from the bundle. It's okay. actually a handheld massager. So can tell me, while I massage myself, tell me how does this bundle thing work? Okay, they will show one item on live, which you will do for bidding. If you are the one that won the bid, they will actually reveal 10 more items. Highest bidder for this will win the a whole box for free. Inside the box got another 10 more items. And that 10 items, you wouldn't know what items you will get. So it's like a, it's the thrill will be there. Yes. So this is one of the items that I got from the 10 items. What was the original item you bidded for and how much was it? Uh, to be honest, I cannot remember what item is it. <laughs> but yeah, normally when they take out all these bundles, uh -huh. they will just bring out a normal item like extension plug. Mm -hmm. And the price can even go up to $500. What? Yes. Okay, what other items in this house did you get from these bundles? Okay, come. I'm put some right back. Okay. There's another one from here. Right. It's actually a massager also. So... This one will be like, you know, you can use it for your neck and your back. Do you and your family actually have a proper use for these items or you are just kind of accumulating them for the sake of the thrill? Certain items then yes, we can use. But certain items then I find it like not useful for me. Mm. Yeah, Do you have a lot of those? Just yes, items I have that a lot. Mini oven, teeter white, then the blackhead remover, the hair straightener for my wife. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, okay. Here I also managed to get like luxury watches from them. These are all from the bundle? Ah, uh, yes, correct. So these are the items that I don't find it useful for now. It's uh, Bluetooth earpieces. Ayo, how many ears you have? Yeah, One, two, that's the three, thing. Four. <laughs> so the that's bluetooth. four pairs of ears. How much have you spent all together? Maybe it's around 3,000. Yeah. Rion clearly enjoys his retail therapy and I can see why. He did snag quite a few good bargains. But I also noticed that there were many items that have been left unopened and unused. So I wonder when this accumulation will end. So can you beg a bargain on live auctions? As I found out, the answer is yes. But it's really buyers beware because when things are so cheap, there's usually a catch. And um, yes, it can get addictive. So I had better watch myself the next time I get onto these online auctions. <laughs>